So, yeah, you, you've been a, a very successful professional football player, um, but you're also a very successful now impact entrepreneur. You're the CEO of GF Biochemicals, uh, one of the leading organizations in the green chemistry. Um, congratulations, because I'm sure you're a very busy man, first of all. <laughs> My first question is probably a question that everyone asks is, I mean, when did you start that journey? And what, what was the turning point from being an athlete to becoming a, an impact entrepreneur and a CEO today? So I, I agree with you. I'm, I've been extremely privileged to live uh, for over 20 years. My, my biggest passion, which was to play football and, and play it for clubs such as Arsenal, AC Milan. But I also grew up by the sea. And uh, since a very early age, uh, my dad be used to be uh, a diver by passion, and I still remember the very long collect of plastic on a beach. And um, another passion has been around like sustainability, but also like tackling climate change. Okay. This is why uh, 12 years ago, uh, while I was still playing football for AC Milan, I decided to uh, create and found this company in order to address and tackle one of the important issues which is related to uh, the petrochemical industry, and I will tell you some more about it. Thank you. I mean, being an athlete, you, at the top, you need to have special skills. Uh, what, what are those skills, the key learnings that you've learned through your career as a footballer that now you use and that helps you in your role as a CEO? So um, let's say I'm, I'm still a, a young entrepreneur and uh, even younger CEO. I became CEO of the group uh, a year ago when we brought on board some external investors and one of them is called Sophie Nova. He's a French fund, probably one of the most sophisticated in, in terms of biotech. And being um, a CEO, being an entrepreneur is uh, totally different uh, than being a, a football player, this is for sure. There are different uh, challenges, it's a different pressure, but still a lot of parallels between uh, being an athlete and being an entrepreneur. And, um, and some of the learnings of my, I would say, past life have been helping me a lot as an entrepreneur. And I'll give you uh, a few examples. Please. Uh, one of the important one is like uh, performing under pressure. When you're playing in front of 80,000 people and million more on the TV, um, this is a lot of pressure. So you have to be able to deal with it. But more importantly, you have to perform on the field. When you're an entrepreneur, this is, uh, this is the same. You are investing uh, a lot of, of your time, you're investing money, your family is in, on board also because the risk you are taking, I mean, is being also, uh, they're being involved. So you have to deal with the pressure, but you also have to be performing. So performing under pressure is something you find in both worlds. The other important aspect is uh, sacrifices, hard work. Mm -hmm. This is something like you have in sport. It's a 200 percent commitment. Same when you are an entrepreneur and even more a founder. Meaning then uh, it's not like you can say, okay, I'm going on a weekend and uh, I'm putting my problems aside and uh, I'll talk about it on Monday. This is something you carry with you all the time. So sacrifices, hard work, uh, dedication, resilience, all these uh, things you find in both words. And uh, maybe the last part is probably around like team spirit. When you play football, it's a collective sport. You're not on your own on a pitch. You're 11 guys, yeah. 25 in a dressing room. And the same when you're an entrepreneur. You're part of the team. People make a company successful. And I always thought the team is more important than the individuality. Anyone can be replaced. So the most important is to be able to inspire, to drive, but also to listen. Yeah. You win or you lose, but as a team. Yeah, always. You win or you learn. Oh, you learn. Thank you. Can you share with the audience uh, a bit more about uh, GF Biochemicals today? I mean, what is the problem you're trying to solve? What's your purpose as an organization? So maybe let's take uh, a step back, yeah. if you don't mind. And uh, let me uh, tell you about uh, an industry which not many people have heard about it. Sure. This is uh, the chemical industry. 
most of the product you are using every day, okay, our consumer goods, meaning like from shower gel to shampoo, deodorant, cleaning product for your house, uh, all of them are made of ingredients. Those ingredients, which is something you may not know, are coming from the petrochemical industry, meaning they are derivatives of oil. So all the cream, all the shower gel, the shampoo you are using today are made of product coming from the, the oil industry. Yeah. This industry is today generating one third of the oil demand. And by 2050, it will generate more than 50% of the oil demand, meaning more than transportation, cars, trucks, planes. So this industry obviously have to go through yeah. a transformation, and it is being driven by a few factors. The first one is a regulator. The regulator is phasing out more and more product which we are using in our everydays, which are harmful for people, but also harmful for the planet, right. first. Second, consumers, people like you, people like me, which are being more and more educated and which want to have access to safer and more sustainable, yeah. I mean, product. And the last part is in between those two, you have the big corporation, the Unilever, the L'Oreal, and many more, many, uh, many more of this world, which are taking huge commitments and standing up, you know, to take actions. And those big groups are becoming more and more accountable and uh, we, as GF Biochemicals, working hand to hand with those big groups to help them accelerate this transition. So, in a few words, what we are doing at GF Bio, we have developed 10 years ago, I mean, over the past 10 years, a set of technology in order to be able to manufacture, okay, bio based ingredients, meaning ingredients who come from biomass, agriculture waste in order to replace the harmful ingredients which are coming from the oil industry and make sure that everybody is able to have a safer and more su sustainable consumer good, everyday product. This is what we're doing. Congratulations. Um, and how do you see the evolution in the industry uh, and how do you see the company evolving in, in five years' time? I think right now we're only seeing the visible uh, part of the iceberg. Sustainability is such a hot topic today, so I'll let you imagine what it will be like in five and ten years. I think it's a, a problem which is becoming uh, um, more and more, which people are becoming more and more aware. And uh, uh, it's not a matter of sorting it out in 15, 20, 50 years. This is a matter we should have already sorted out yesterday. So I think it's uh, um, a transition that's going to be accelerating even more. We see in transportation very clearly, like in 10, 15 years, most of the car will be electric car or, or hydrogen car. Uh, but the chemical industry is also an industry we need to find solutions. So strongly believe that those solutions will be coming from companies like ours and others. Because what we have experienced also is, is becoming more and more difficult for the big groups to, be, to adapt, to be dynamic, and to be also reactive to the new demand. So I think there will also be some uh, uh, balance which will change. And I like to say, you know, I believe very much in a Darwin theory. It's not the strongest and the biggest will survive, but the ones who knows how to adapt. And we have seen companies such as Kodak mm. uh, and, and Blackberries and many others not anticipating the change and disappearing. So if you ask me where we're aiming and hoping to be in five years, this is not a, an easy question. You know, in our industry, uh, you don't even know where we would be next week. And uh, like you say, I'm moving a lot. But if I project myself and I'm trying to, to be ambitious, I like to say that in five years, we like to be one of the main players in the biomaterial ingredients, hoping to basically like transition away from the oil industry and deliver safer and more sustainable product to everyone. And what would you say to a leader, a CEO of a big company that is not ready to embrace that transformation in a very authentic way? What did you say to him or to, he, to her? I will, I will ask them to listen what people want. I think uh, we have seen for the past uh, a few years uh, the young generation in the street with Greta Thunberg. I remember when I used to be 10, 12 years old, I used to kick, to kick the ball. I, not, I was not in the street fighting for my future. So, this is a very strong message to all the generation. And those kids, those next generations are becoming the consumer of tomorrow. So 
it's just a matter of like listening what people want and uh, being able to anticipate and and project yourself. So if you haven't done anything yet, I think it's it, it's more than ever the time to to drive change because not because it's uh, it's um, I would say uh, a necessity, but because I mean it's also being requested by by the people and we don't have the choice. Yeah, and I think the risk is doing nothing probably. Uh, yeah, the risk is doing nothing. But if right now I was uh, at the top of one of those multinational. I mean, doing doing nothing is going backward. Yeah. So doing something is probably more 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 smart. I agree. Coming to athletes, um, more and more athletes become vocal about what they stand for, about their commitment to contribute to the planet. What's your view on this? This is a, a good point. I think uh, athletes. Um, like big organizations such as UEFA, FIFA, um, have a social responsibility. Today, sports and football in, in particular, I would say, is probably one of the industry which is still able to bring people together, to unite people. And for that reason, they have a social responsibility and they have to embrace it. They have to stand up for those social issues, climate change and others, because they cannot like neglect it or ignore it like we see big corporation trying to tackle it i mean like th those athletes those uh, organization in sport also have to to take some some action so i think things are changing slowly but they do are changing and uh, i mean 10 years ago or even five years ago was an athlete used to stand up or share his opinion about like a social issue we used to say oh i mean like he should keep to playing football i mean i think things are changing i mean the same way that you have a politic sharing the opinion or like, uh, or like people running like a large, 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 uh, large company, athletes, you know, and uh, also becoming like, uh, um, they have to inspire, you know, those generations of kids following them on social media. So I strongly, you know, recommend the athletes when they're passionate about something, when they feel knowledgeable about that topic, they have the right to stand up and be able to drive change and inspire others. I agree. Um I mean, some, uh, some of those athletes are even investing now in solution. Uh, I don't know if you have athletes as investors, but it feels very opportunistic right now. Uh, I mean, most of the athletes are driven by profit uh, when they invest, not necessarily to solve a problem. Do you agree? But I would say if you invest, you want or you hope to, to generate profit. And uh, when you're an athlete, also what's important to say is you have a career of 15 years. And after that, you know, like you have to reinvent yourself. You have to, to um, turn the page and, and, and write a new one. And this is true. I think like this, um, this inspiration, I would say, is coming from the US. We yeah. see more and more athletes in the US like investing in technology. And I think in Europe now, you see more and more athletes also trying to diversify. Maybe like a few years ago, a portfolio of an athlete used to be from maybe some real estate, a few investment. Now they're also thinking, okay, part of this portfolio, we should make investment in technology. Yeah. Like you say, so far, I mean, it's more uh, opportunistic. We don't have any structures or like I would say entity which are able to, or maybe not that I know, which are able to support the athlete in, in that journey. I think um, this is coming. I have been like uh, asked many times, you know, like to to be involved in, in things like that. I think for me the priority is always the athlete, and to have a structure which really care about the athlete and make sure that an athlete have access to to the right deal flow because this is at the end of the day the most important. Having access to the right opportunity, the right deal flow, and make sure the athlete can basically invest in a right uh, in a right project, and then if the project is the right one then everybody is successful and there is profit for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. As a world, do you think the sports industry is really stepping up right now when it comes to solving the environmental problems we face? Oh yeah, 100%. 100%. We okay. discussed it like uh, a few minutes before, but I, I strongly believe, I mean, FIFA, UEFA, the clubs, I mean, like Premier League and then and, and the French League, I mean, they have a, a, a huge role to play because they have so much visibility and uh, you cannot hide anymore. I mean, those organizations are for profit organizations and they need to have like a strategy when it comes to sustainability, when it comes to climate change, they simply cannot ignore it. So. Um, 
trying to uh, to also like be part of uh, the change which is happening in sport and in football we were reflecting together on how to to tackle this issue and to also bring people because people are also part of the solution and you need to empower people and also try to communicate about the fact that small changes put together yeah. have a huge impact so everybody everybody is part of the solution and and every small change makes a difference